This video um, is a topic that has been pretty hot in terms of uh, getting a lot of press out there. Ozempic face, people that look overly gaunt and then they need fillers or fat grafting. As you guys probably know, I wrote the most definitive textbook out there for fat grafting back in 2006 called Complementary Fat Grafting. That was the most popular book in the world for uh, fat grafting for many, many years. Sold a lot of copies of books for this. So volume is one of those things that I'm very passionate about. I think there's obviously a lot of problems with people over over volumized. Um, and now that we're hearing about these uh, volume depletion uh, uh, issues with these type of what are called GLP-1 agonist therapies some, such as semi-glutide, Ozempic, Wagovia, which is just brand names of semi-glutide, Manjaro, which is a different type that has a little bit more broader um, uh, uh, agonist activity, that uh, with these injections now becoming, I think, sublingual therapies that are causing uh, patients to lose a lot of weight. Uh, there's a natural question is, should I do filler? Should I do fat? Um, what are your thoughts, Dr. Lyme, about it? So I don't see a lot of patients with these uh, faces that look overly gaunt, but obviously when you lose a ton of volume to the body, you can lose a ton of volume to the face and make the face look quite thin as well, which may be unattractive since a fuller face um, in, a, in select areas can be uh, very powerful in terms of making someone look more youthful and not overfilled. You know, the, the areas that people look overfilled that I see both with fillers and with fat are the anterior cheek and the lips. And these are the areas that are sweet spots for other places and they are my um, uh, no-fly zones for a large uh, percentage of patients. And I'll try to maybe detail that more in a moment. Uh, but I want to focus on sort of the concept of you know, you know, if you're gonna do Ozempic or you, if you're gonna do this therapy, um, what should you know about fat grafting? So if you listen to my fat grafting videos, the thing that I always talk about is the biggest fear I have after fat grafting is someone with a lot of weight fluctuations where they're losing a ton more volume or they're gaining a ton more volume. Um, fat is not safe for that person. So is it safe in ozempic patients? So first, let's sort of understand what fat grafting is doing so that we can better understand where we have to be careful with it. So fat is not a bioinert product. So I, I um, tell patients it's not like Restylane being put in the face. So it's if you gain or lose weight, the fat will change with you because the fat is not a static product. So, um, if you are going to lose a lot of weight, that fat that I injected into your face will become smaller in size. It doesn't go away, it just shrinks in size. Um, and then if you gain a lot of weight, the fat gets bigger in size. So, if someone is really seesawing up and down, then fat in general is not the ideal uh, filler. Although unfortunately, like areas around the eyes, um, fill, I don't like fillers anymore because I've seen some issues with Tyndall effect, which means a grayish color and migration problem. So fat is my go-to around the, around the eyes. However, if someone is really just seesawing up and down, then it's not an easy option um, uh, to do fat because of that problem. I usually tell patients who are in the middle of, uh, in their weight loss trend is to consider doing the fat graft somewhere uh, either a third of the way in or a half of the way in because I rather them lose a little bit of the volume than look overfilled. So that's one thing. Now, with um, Manjaro, Ozempic, uh, semiglutide, any kind of um, uh, GLP-1 agonist type therapy, patients do pretty well with maintenance dosing if they can get there. So how would I recommend someone to consider fat grafting if they're planning um, to do Ozempic. So in general, I like them to one, be relatively stable. So if they're gonna lose the weight and they've gotten to a point where they're pretty stable, I want them to be on a regimen of maintenance. So sometimes the maintenance is once a month, maybe it's every other week, maybe it's every six weeks. Some people do it on a variable basis to maintain their weight. Uh, they're not doing it very often, but I would love them to be stable. They do need to know if they stop the medication and they gain a ton of weight back, that face could look too too big. And so that's important. Then I have to do microliposuction or cut out the fat, which is less ideal. So we want to avoid that problem. Um, of course, if they lost the weight, the, 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 the volume would be uh, rebalanced. So 
because there is a, a tool now to maintain weight in a more a little bit easier way I don't feel as much problematic to, to do someone who has lost a lot of that weight and is on some kind of maintenance therapy on the long end. The reason I mention that is that it, the other flip side of that is if someone is not on some kind of maintenance regimen and they just come in and they want, they're trying to lose a ton of weight doing exercise and diet and trying to get down to their thinnest bonus thin weight with no assistance and then they say let's do a fat graph. My concern is that you know, willpower starts to slip, people get lazy, they don't work out as much, they did that, you know, hard exercise for three month regimen, lost all the weight, got a bikini body, and then said, you know what, I'm getting a little lazy now. Okay, and then they started gaining weight back, and then it doesn't look that good. So I remember a gentleman uh, many years ago, I did his fat graft, and he said, hey, Dr. Lamb, I've lost all this weight, I'm ready to go for, um, go to get this treated, uh, get some fat grafting, I want a, a touch up procedure because I've lost this weight, I've got a little bit more gaunt. I said, hey, you're getting married, you're gonna gain weight when you get married. He says, no, 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 I want it. I go, sorry, you're not gonna get it. He's been my patient now for maybe 15 years and I said, aren't you glad? I did not add that fat when you asked me to because you gained the weight after you got married. So weight stability is a very important thing and if you can be on some kind of maintenance dose with the Ozempic or the semiglutide, I mean, they're the same thing, you know, semiglutide is a generic name. But if you're on some kind of GLP-1 agonist uh, maintenance, or at least you have shown me that you can be relatively uh, on a good maintenance, then I feel much more confident to inject your fat at that fat uh, at that weight level. The other thing is that I do do my fat grafting under general anesthesia. It is something that I would uh, probably ask you and, uh, to be off your semi-glutide for uh, or Ozempic for six weeks because there's delayed gastric emptying. The one thing we want to be careful with is aspiration or problems with that because your gastric contents are not um, are not emptying as fast, so you really want to be off of your your medication for quite some time. Uh, you know, so we want to be on maintenance and also on a longer uh, uh, period, like a, a period of time off of it, so that I can make sure that you don't have any aspiration risk. Um, the other option is if you don't know if you're going to be on Ozempic or whatever it may be forever you may want to not lose all that weight down to your ideal and lose part of it. Understand that you're going to lose a little bit of the, the result after if you gain the weight back, but you give a margin of safety. So I always like safe, defer on safety over efficacy. People are, are very short uh, in their vision of their life. They always, hey, I'm look good because I'm dating now, I'm single. Hey, look, I'm, I want to look good for this you know trip coming to Cancun. What I encourage you is to let me layer some of your desires with, uh, with having done this for over 20 years, is to layer my concepts of long-term safety. And I think that's an important element. So when you said, oh, I just lost all this weight, I, I've got to put fat in my face. A lot of doctors out there don't understand fat. They don't have a 20 year history of understanding fat. They don't understand, and they stick it in the worst place in the world, which is the anterior cheek. Well, actually, let's talk about that. So I've talked about this in my other videos. I think it's worth just mentioning here. What people do, and I used to do this. I used to do this years ago, 10 years plus ago, I used to put fat in the cheeks and the anterior cheeks. It doesn't look good. And I used to put fillers there. People smile and even the smallest amount just makes people look weird. So um, I, I've had to go back and micro -life liposuction some of my patients from 10 years ago. I don't like that anterior cheek. It's not a good place to put fat. So it's an area that I really encourage you, if you're going to not to me to someone else, fat just doesn't look good in the anterior cheeks. Now lips, can you can get away with it if it's done tastefully. I do it very tastefully. I don't, I, I'm not opposed to fat in the lips. I'm just opposed to bad work in the lips. But oftentimes if there's a huge sag to the upper lip, um, you know, a lip, uh, lip uh, lift with a corner of a lip lift or a lower lip advancement or something, may be better an option because sometimes it just looks like a very long saggy white lip and you're trying to overstuff it with fat and it just does not work. And so all these things are very um, broad sweeping generalities. They're, they're meant to give you a framework of understanding of uh, so that when you come in and listen to when I talk to you, I'll be able to counsel you a little bit better. But hopefully these concepts are a good framework of thinking, especially if you're not gonna to come to me. But if you are coming to me, it also helps a lot because it gives you an understanding of what I see and how I feel about safety and efficacy when it comes to fat grafting and in this context with patients who have been on Ozempic.